Hi, Mike here again. Jeremy here. So, so far we've talked about the learning cycle in pretty general terms. We've looked at the four parts of it, which you can see up here, and then we talked about some of the things you were trying to uh, figure out as you planned your course. So why don't we put those two together and see what the learning cycle looks like as we move through the components of what you want to do with your students. Yeah, so the, you know, the big thing for me was that I realized through our dis earlier discussion that I really wanted to help the students approach maps skeptically. Right. And that I wanted to lead with experience if at all possible. So maybe the best thing to do is for me to just take you through the activity that I decided to use to, to generate this map skepticism. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at this map. Oh, yeah. And I took this idea from John Karras at Smith. Uh, he presents a, a mystery map to the campus every so often, and so I did the same thing. There's no label on this map. And I asked the students, hey, can you come up with, based on the patterns that you see here, can you come up with what attribute might be uh, shown on this particular map? But I also want them to think about, you know, what experiences have they had? What do they bring to the table that might bias their interpretation? What might help? but what might also hinder their interpretation. So right. I, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask oh, you boy. Hmm. what attributes might be shown here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I notice a pattern in sort of the Mississippi Delta. There seems to be a cluster of the darker colors. And I can see from the scale there, the legend, that they seem that seems to be the high part of whatever the range is. And then there's some sort of another cluster, I guess, over in the eastern seaboard. So I'm beginning to think it might be something to do with regional differences uh, in the south. There is sort of this other bunch of dark blue spaces, maybe they're counties or something up in the Dakotas, and then a little bit over in the western part of Texas there. So maybe something to do with dialect or maybe like Native American populations. Also maybe something that has to do with uh, poverty or uh, education levels. Uh, so those would be my guesses. And, I mean, I'm from the Northeast, so I don't really quite have the knowledge of the region that might be helpful in something like this. But. Yeah, and it's not a, you know, it's not a very obvious pattern, which I think may, makes this map kind of fun. Right. But as the students go through this process, they, they do realize that if they're from a different re region that they're evaluating, that maybe they bring some biases or um, stereotypes with them about different regions of the country. And as you can imagine, if you were a student who wasn't from the United States, then it would be even more difficult to, to interpret these patterns and come up with an idea of what it might be. Right. Right. So I like how this uh, right away, I mean, I feel like I just had an experience because I didn't know what to make of this. Um, I would have expected to sort of have a label or something like that that told me right away what to think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't. And so I had to really kind of confront my own ignorance about this. Uh, so is that kind of fit with how you want to lead with experience? I think so. Yeah, okay. and it also gets at from what you're saying is it feels it's a little unsettling to try to be you know, to be put on the spot and right. asked to do that. So and, and that's really you know the nature of the learning cycle. Um, and then, you know so this exam and um, period kind of links to the the questions that I've asked and thinking about the learning cycle and how it reminds me to allow time for individual re reflection. Yeah. Um, I started to do this where I put the students, uh, before I put the students into groups, I had them uh, address these questions on their own a little okay. bit, give them some time. Okay. And then when they get into groups and we start to discuss this as a class, it feels like we're moving into the um, conceptual development phase, the mm -hmm. explain phase. Uh, again, these aren't distinct phases, they kind of run together. So it sounds like these things are really focused on the students interacting directly with the maps, maybe with each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then do you come in here more or how does that work? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I, I come in here. So, for example, um, you, you talked about the color value being representing more. Yeah. And it's a, a little bit of a giveaway because on the legend it shows that it's a higher number. But right. sometimes I take the legend off and then challenge the assumption that darker oh. means more. It may not. Sure. It may mean less of a particular attribute. So we talk about map conventions. We may start to get our color terminology and vocabulary in order. Okay. And depending on what they do with the numbers in the legend, we might start to talk about data classification in that stage. But if I have, um, it's it's kind of fun to be a little bit nimble with this and see where the students take it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we talk about data classification. Maybe we don't at this point. Yeah. You know, we will later, but right. um, kind of go with where they happen to, to want to go. Yeah, I kind of remember from the first video that all the things you had described as being the things you wanted them to know really kind of come in here as informing their experience. And then the doing has sort of happened here too, but it seems like they might do some more after they've had a little chance to explain and kind of conceptually 
understand things better. Yeah, and oftentimes, you know, the class period is wrapping up. And so what I might do is just send them away with another map that has a label on it. Maybe it's liberal versus conservative by county. Mm -hmm. And what I hope the experience has done for them is make them ask the questions like, well, what, how are they defining liberal and conservative? Mm -hmm. How are they measuring that? Is it just registered voters? Is it consistent across uh, different counties? So that's um, the skeptical part. Right, yeah, right. So let's okay. apply this skepticism to a, right. to a new situation. Cool. Yeah, so they started off being snookered right. <laughs> in some ways. I mean, they're not necessarily misled because you told them to really think about what the map might mean, um, but it's still challenging. And then yeah. they end up sort of with more of a deliberate questioning of the map. Yeah, yeah and the, you know, this uh, we haven't talked about what this is a map of yet. So you're oh. ready for the big reveal? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's see. Really? So that makes me think, like, what... What are they tracking? Because it's a numerical range, right? right. So they got to be counting something. Uh, or maybe get, well, I asked the students to make those guesses. You know, create a list of as many things as you can think of that would that would be a proxy for lust. Yeah, boy, uh, adult bookstores, uh, prostitution busts, or something. Yeah, those, <laughs> those all make the oh, list. Okay. Yeah, right. right. So you're gonna tell us what the. Well, this is actually this this map was created by uh, researchers at Kansas State University. Um, they mapped all of the seven deadly sins huh. using proxies for those seven deadly sins. So I think they did it a little bit tongue in cheek uh. to raise the question about it, about maps. Is uh. what's claimed to be mapped is that what's really being mapped? And in this case, it's incidences of sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> I mean, I almost want to say, like, that could just have to do with, like, medical care availability or something like that, too. Or education levels in terms of uh, the schools have sex education, that kind of thing. I don't right, know. right. Or if you're a county who's doing an especially good job of tracking this, then your reward um, is to show up, on, you know, brightly on the lust map. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, the, and it's a, it's a great discussion that in, ensues and carries on to the analysis Excellent. of uh, other maps. And, you know, you mentioned poverty earlier. This, if you if you do map poverty oh. um, by county, you'll get a map that looks um, very much like this. So oh. the question is, is when you're measuring measuring um, STDs by county, what are you really measuring? You know what? Oh. Uh, and oh, so that might be a proxy for something else. Yeah. You know, besides lust. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, this is great. So this is sort of an application of the learning cycle to a specific set of things you want the students to both know and then to ultimately do. And uh, I think for the next video, it sounds like what we're going to do is talk about some general considerations for applying the learning cycle to any course. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you. Great. Thanks.